Sure. Our Father God, thank you for tonight's time of equipping our, our study together in the world, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you've released to us tonight, Father God, through your vessels. And we just bless you, give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hi, Amy. Okay. So, tonight we are um, continuing in the study of the gifts, and um, Apostle Dixie started that, and then Apostle Brian, who I'm sure will be joining us momentarily, um, he was talking, uh, discussing about teamwork, and then on a couple Sundays ago, and then last week, uh, he and Apostle Dixie came together and talked about the gifts and teamwork together. So this week she asked me to share about the human body so that we can kind of parallel and get an understanding of the human body um, to help us understand how our spiritual body functions. <clears throat> Precious is on. She um, is a nurse, so I'm going to give some information, and then I've asked Apostle Robert and Apostle Dixie to join us um, to talk about the spiritual aspect of things, and then Precious is going to tell us about some things um, concerning our natural bodies, and hopefully all of your prophetic um, unctions are flowing <laughs> tonight. So as you hear this uh, natural side of things, hopefully as, as you're listening, you are able to, to catch some of the spiritual uh, parallels, okay? So the first thing I wanted to start with is that um, we have one body, okay? You, you have a shell. It is a body. That body is made up of basically three parts. You have your head, you have your torso or your trunk, um, and then your extremities. So think stick man. You know, when you teach your kids to draw, you teach them about the, you know, the head, the, the body, and then the extremities, okay? Inside, um, this structure, this one structure, we have 12 systems. Inside that 12, in 12, inside those systems, we have five major organs that are essential for our life. If one of them is not working, we will die. Um, and it'll shut all the other ones down. So it's essential that you have all five of them. And um, we're going to talk about those uh, momentarily. Okay. Um, the 12 systems, and I'll try and take this as slow as possible, but I'm excited, so I'm sorry. The 12 systems are the integumentary system, which is your skin, and I'm just going to give a very high-level um, uh, purpose for each of these because I don't want to delve down like in a science class or anything, but I would so encourage you to go look at them. Um, that's your skin system, and it encapsulates encapsulate, oh, encapsulates everything, okay, so all of the other systems, your skin covers it, and you are, um, they're, they're full of um, sensory res uh, receptors, so they're very, you know, so that you can feel, uh, you can touch, and that kind of thing, so that's your integumentary system. Um, the next system is your skeletal system, and that's your bones, so it bears the weight of everything in your body, and excuse me one second, I had notes here. They fall down. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, and then you have your muscular system. Your muscular system enables movement. Um, it provides strength and it keeps the, the skeletal structure in place. Okay, so your bones aren't slipping and sliding all over the place. Okay, um, you have your nervous system, and this is the most complex system in the body. Um, it detects and processes sensory information, um, and it's the activation center for responses. And if I need to slow down, please just tell me. Okay. The next system is your cardiovascular system, and that delivers oxygen and nutrients to the tissues <clears throat> um, and to your organs and other things unseen in your body. We have our respiratory system. Um, and that delivers oxygen and removes carbon dioxide from the blood. So you breathe in, you're breathing in oxygen, and it's filtering through all of some other different systems. <laughs> and eventually your body gets oxygenated blood, and it is breathing out that carbon dioxide. Um, that's a very complex process. I just made it sound really simple. 
the urinary system is the filter system and it removes waste from the blood. So that's your urinary system. Okay. Your reproductive system, this is life-giving and life-bearing. Um, growth, nourishment, also a very fascinating system. Okay. Um, you have your endocrine system, and this one we don't hear about a lot, but it's a very important system. It's a collection of glands that produce hormones that regulate your metabolism, your growth and development, your tissue function, your sexual function, reproduction, sleep, mood, and among other things. So very, very important system right there. When things so, just, oh, it releases a hormone, but it's a very complex system. Um, your digestive system pro, uh, processes food for nourishment and removes waste. We have two more. You have your immune system, which is a defense system. It's essential for survival. Nourishes, or I'm sorry, neutralizes bacteria, viruses, parasites, or fungi, and recognizes and neutralizes harmful substances from the environment. It fights against, and this I thought was amazing, fights against the body's own cells that have changed due to illness. That's the immune system. And then your lymphatic system is your filter system or defense system. Um, it returns fluid to the blood and it is a defense against disease. Okay, so those are the 12 systems. We are going to delve into those systems, but tonight, okay, but tonight we want to talk about these five major organs. So I want to give those to you five major organs, and without them, you will die. So uh, one is your brain, the other is your heart, uh, the other is your liver, and then you have kidneys and lungs. Okay, so you have a set of kidneys and a set of lungs, so it gives you seven total. So inside these five major essential organs, you have the number seven, which is the perfected, right? Um, <clears throat> come on, all you prophetic people. So you have these five essential gifts, or I'm sorry, <laughs> organs that you cannot live without that I've asked Apostle Dixie and Apostle Summers to join us and kind of um, uh, parallel those spiritually for us. So really, really quick, your brain is a control center. Your heart, again, pumps that oxygenated blood um, throughout our bodies. Um, very, very important. Um, uh, kidneys remove waste and extra water from the blood. It keeps chemicals like sodium and potassium and calcium balanced in your body. It also makes hormones that help control blood pressure mm -hmm. and stimulate your bone marrow to make red blood cells. And red blood cells carry oxygen and iron. So that's your kidney. Your liver is a filtering organ and it detoxifies or purifies harmful chemicals and releases nutrients into your bloodstream. And then your lungs, last but not least, extract oxygen from the air and transfer it to the blood where it can be sent to our blood cells that carry oxygen to organs and then it removes the carbon dioxide as we exhale. Okay, so those are the five organs. Now, Apostle I don't know if Apostle, if you want to start or if MD wants to start, but if you could help parallel those for us spiritually. I want to talk about in 1 Corinthians 12, where it talks about that we that we've been uh, in verse 15, we've been um, by the Spirit, we have been baptized into the body. Okay, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether bond or free. But the body is not one member, but many members. And God set the members, everyone in the body. So as the natural body we see, then so goes the spiritual body that God has created. And these members uh, are, uh, well, he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians, if you look at it, that you can't say because you're not, that I can't say I'm not the hand and I have no need of you or the head to the foot, I have no need of you, but all the members in the body, 
even though those that are feeble that are they are still necessary. And I, and I think that this is what we're going to talk about tonight. And it says in 23, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. So, um, and it says, and then it, go, it goes on 24, it says, for our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given them more abundant honor to that part which lacked. So, and for the purpose of this it is, is what it says in verse 25. So there's no schism or no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. In the body, the parts that are uncomely are the parts that are the, these five major parts that she's talking about. The brain, nobody's saying, oh, you have a beautiful brain <laughs> or the heart. The heart is not, it has no, you know, it doesn't look good at all. It looks, matter of fact, all these parts, the kidneys, the lungs, they have no beauty in them, but they are very important. Like she said, you can't live without these parts. Therefore, he put these parts in and we're going to correlate these parts, these five major parts with the five uh I was I call them motivational gifts. Some people call them ministry gifts of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. That is that's listed in the Word of God. And we talked about these earlier when we uh, as we've been talking about them about this um the gifts. And the, these gifts are given to the body for the purpose of getting of uh, doing the work of ministry i mean their their purpose is very very important and uh, but yet they're not seen and i think i wanted to share that that you don't see them you see the skin she talked about that the, that you know covers the body you see eyes and what you know you see the outside of the physical body but you don't see these five major parts that without you, one of them you can't live all of them are, are essential to life. So it's a, so they're very important. And I wanted to say before we get into it and correlate them, I wanted to uh, ask Precious if she would share what happens if one of these major uh, parts does not function. And, uh, and, and to describe medically what they call that, I think this is really important for them to understand because it'll help you understand the value how valuable it is to have these five parts functioning and functioning correctly. Precious? Hi, everybody. So last night, um, MV and I were having a conversation about the parts of the body since Pastor was going to be teaching on this. And we began to talk about the function of the heart and the lungs and the kidney and the liver. And um, what I was telling her is the reason that people come down with multiple chronic diseases is because one system shut down and we didn't do what it was that we needed to do to take care of the rest. For example, if I were to have an acute lung injury, say I were to get into a car accident or someone were to hit me bluntly in my chest and my lungs um, were not to function properly, my heart and my kidney would then supplement or um, they would make up the work to perfuse my body. So my lungs would be resting and my heart would pump harder and faster and my kidney would filter faster just to get the blood to perfuse throughout the system. Um, the same would go for your liver. Your liver um, is your main um, detoxifier but your kidneys also function in that and so do, do your lymph nodes. So we went on to talk and so say I have heart failure that's acute. Something happened, an acute injury and my heart begins to fail. So now my kidneys and my lungs are working harder. If I don't give my body that um, rest that it needs, or if I do something to make it work, if I'm smoking, if I'm drinking, if I'm eating high fatty foods, then I'm not giving my heart a chance to rest. So I'm not protecting my heart. I'm not building up my heart. And that means my kidneys are working harder and harder and my lungs are working harder and harder. And over time, if my heart does not begin to function properly again, then my kidneys might shut down because they've had to work hard for so long. Um, and many systems of the body work together that way. When everything is in balance in your body, that's homeostasis. That means I'm happy. Everything is functioning the way that it should. But when something happens wrong in your body, it triggers what's called 
um, a negative feedback loop. So that means that there is a sense going up to my brain saying, hey, I need help here. And that your brain then sends back another neuron to your kidney and to your lungs or to whatever vital organ to say, hey, help this body part out. And then once everything is functioning correctly again, it goes back into homeostasis. And so MD was kind of equating that to the body and how we all need one another to function properly. MD. Gotcha. Okay. So when so when you um are, when you see that these functioning parts of the natural body, how they go to assist when there's a, something wrong with the other part, uh, and then the system that goes into place, um, this is this is what should be going on in in our in our spiritual body. That when we do not have a functioning part of 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 the um, of the equipping gift. So, which are the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist, then other parts in that equipping uh, uh, fivefold ministry begin to take on to help to the help to, to take and weigh the the burden of the other part that's not functioning properly. So, case in point, you have a prophet, and if the prophet is in a cave. And not doing what what it's supposed to do to do to for the perfecting of the body, you know, to get the body up and going as far as what their work in ministry is, or to edify them. They're in the cave. Now it's going to take more responsibility on, let's say, the 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 apostle. Now the apostle is trying to do, you know, not only his work, but trying to do more work where the prophet's work is lacking. So it's important that each one of these functions functions in its in the capacity that God put it in, so it does not cause more work on another part of the body that is not that that really should be functioning in what it's supposed to do. Because of fear, because of misuse, because of abuse, because of the of, of course not misunderstanding and not allowing God to flow through you because what the gift that you have, God's given you, and you have the ability to do that gift. As long as there's not these things that are uh, like even sin in your life, you know, anything that you allowing that's not like God to be there, wrong thinking, incorrect thinking, uh, thinking that is not lined up with what God's word says about you, you're believing the lies, uh, religion, you know, uh, just trying to work out things in yourself. You know, the Bible talks about that even that that you do in yourself is like filthy rags. So you're, you're not to try to, to do anything in a working in self, but you are to allow the Holy Spirit to do the work through you that you have been created to do, that, and uh, especially when it comes to so that you can minister to the motivational or the ministry gifts, okay? <clears throat> it's important that these five functions are doing what they're supposed to do and doing it properly without any uh without allowing the enemy to come in and have them off you know course because of fear or because of uh, anything that's that is not like god so these gifts is so important that they are uh are listening to god like we, every gift is but that they're listening to god because of their uh because of their uh, important function of perfecting the saints the important function for what? For the work of the ministry. So that we can do what? So that the, that the body of Christ will be edified. So I wanted to share that. And then Apostle is going to go more into uh, the different functions of the Egyptian uh, gifting, you know, as compared to, to, the, to the natural body and, and the spiritual body. I just, Apostle, if I can, just really quick. Um, when MD and, and well, Precious was talking about the different systems and how, you know, if one is in distress, all the other ones kind of pick up. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to MD earlier today, we were talking about stewardship. And it's not something that we really talk about uh, with regard to our physical bodies because you don't think of it. Typically, nobody even pays attention to these 
hive major organs unless there's a problem. And so um, if if something starts happening, you know, you start, I'm short of breath, or I'm this, or I'm that, and then all of a sudden we're like, whoa, now we got a problem, now we should look at it. But if you think about just your own physical body, um, uh, how would you eat what you want, you put in it what you want, um, you don't get enough sleep. We know we have all the information in the world at our fingertips and, and people can say it and we read articles and all of those good things, but it doesn't mean that we apply that information. So we don't really steward our bodies like we should. And then when we get older, we're like, oh, you know, you know, they're just older, you know, systems break down. But I don't, I don't think that that's the way it was supposed to be. Our system shouldn't do that. It should be okay because we've stewarded it all along. So with, in, in parallel to, you know, what Apostle's about to talk about those the five um, ministry gifts, is that, you know, the church doesn't pay attention until something's wrong. And now we're like, oh, my God, what you, Apostle, Prophet, you know, now we want to pay attention and, and dig into them and test them, so to speak. You know, like you go to the hospital and be like, well, here are my symptoms, and then they go to that particular a system or organ that might uh, be the cause of, of your symptoms. So that's what we're doing um, spiritually in the body of Christ. So that, I just wanted to interject. Yeah, awesome. Well, let me um, let me just share this. I think uh, what, what's being taught tonight, what you what is being released, is awesome. Um, I'm reminded actually of a scripture in First Corinthians 15 where it talks about um, first the natural, then the spiritual. Right. First the natural, then the spiritual. Not first the spiritual, then the natural. But first the natural, then that which is spiritual. And that correlates nicely, that scripture, to, you know, kind of what's being done here is you're giving the five major uh, organs of the body. And... Now we're going to parallel that as it pertains to uh, the, the, the spiritual aspect. And, um, you know, I, I can't say enough for the, and for lack of a better term, the fivefold uh, gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, simply because, um, not be, and not because I'm an apostle, but because of the exact points that Tosh is making, Precious is making, and Mama Dixie is making, is that, you can't live without those. Okay, you can't live without a brain, you can't live without a heart, and so on. Um, and the body of Christ cannot live without these five gifts in operation. It just it just can't happen. So it's the same um, the, the same parallel. And um, I'm not, I'll just read one portion of it in Ephesians chapter 4. Of course, we all know 4.11 where it talks about he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Um, and what those reasons, you know, why he gave it, you know. But in I really like down in verse 16 where it says, For whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. So that's saying that. The, the whole body, okay, now Tasha went through like the, the major systems of the body, but the whole body gets its equipping from these five major organs or these five gifts spiritually. So, so the natural body gets its equipping from these five, you know, the brain and so on, what Tasha just mentioned, but the spiritual body gets its equipping from the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And so we can kind of liken the the uh, apostle to the brain, okay? Um, and the brain is very, it's, it's very complex. Um, obviously, you know, I, I'm not a medical profession professional, but, you know, you have the uh, brain stem and you have all that stuff and all the different nerves that go down through the uh, spinal column and so on. And uh, really, it, it, it's just a phenomenal thing. It's it's a it's an amazing thing when you study the brain, um, what the brain can do. The g brain continues to grow. The brain never actually stops uh, growing and developing. Okay, uh, you know, people say, well, when I grow up, I want to be this. Well, you really never stop growing. 
you never stop growing because the, the, the brain, as it were, is always uh, developing itself. And I really believe that that has a lot to do with the grace of God given on the apostolic uh, gift of an apostle. Um, when it comes to the, uh, the lungs, I believe that would be the, the prophet or the prophetic, okay? Uh, just the fact that it's breathing, um, it, it, it inhales, but it also exhales. Mm -hmm. Um, it detoxifies it, it, and purifies. It, it, it releases the, the wind of God. Uh, it has the element of uh, purifying because, again, just, you know, it, and, and there's something, I, I have it on my iWatch. It tells me every 30 seconds, take deep breaths. And that's supposed to just cleanse you and make you feel better. You're, 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 you kind of think, you know, sometimes they say if you just take deep breaths and exhale, that you'll have more clarity. So we can kind of parallel that. You have the brain as an apostle, and then you have the lungs as prophets. And that's very important that those two work together. Because if somebody inhales and exhales, you have that clarity of mind, okay, or brain. And I don't believe that apostles should work separately or independent from prophets. I think that they need to work very close. Um, then you have the, the kidneys, which I'm going to parallel to the... Um, uh, to the evangelist, okay? Uh, the kidneys, I believe the kidneys, you said purify blood, if I, if, if correct. Use the waste. You, yeah, excess water, excess water and uh, eliminates waste. Um, you know, evangelists, I think sometimes, we, here's what we think. We think evangelists go to the world and try to get people saved. But remember, the, 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 we're talking about the five gifts to the body. An evangelist is not to the world. Matter of fact, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher is not to the world. Those are to the body of Christ, and it's the body that goes to the world, then and goes and makes disciples of all nations. So this stuff where you say, you know, you see this stuff where evangelists go out. And they go get soul winning and get all these people saved. Not so. That that's not that's not the model. The, the the evangelist is to the body of Christ, okay. And you have that element of uh, of cleansing and purifying, just like the uh, the kidneys do. I also like uh, the fact. Sorry, we got a truck on my. Um, I also like the fact that you have two kidneys. Now, we know that kidneys can operate, you know, there can be one kidney. Um, it's going to be tough, but you, I think you can make it on one, one kidney. Um, but as it pertains to evangelists, you know, uh, even that thing where there's, there's two, two are better, greater than one, I really believe that that is showing that as it pertains to evangelists, that we need to have more of that being um, equipped, more that type of equipping in the body. We don't have that. We really, we don't see a lot of that. So we need to double up on that. Um, then you have the uh, the liver. I believe, now the liver, I, I know about uh, livers somewhat, um, that they certainly purify, they detox, um, they, they, they purify from, what is it, harmful chemicals, mm -hmm. harmful chemicals and things without throughout the body. And this is critical, or, or, and we can parallel it to teachers, because a teacher is to bring sound doctrine. And if you don't have sound doctrine, then we're not going to do what, it's, what it says to do in Ephesians 4, where um, we're equipped so that we're not deceived, uh, we don't waver, we're not tossed to and fro. So if you have a strong teaching, uh, according to the, the, the doctrine of the kingdom, then the body is going to be pure. You're not going to have all this esoteric teaching. You're not going to have all this weirdness and spookiness. And then lastly, of course, the heart, um, which is the pastor. Right. And and we've heard a lot of times people say the heart is the prophet. No. And, uh, and when you look at what the heart does, you know, um, the heart pumps the oxygen, um, that oxygenated blood throughout the body to every part of the body. And uh, so the heart function is uh, touches every part of the body, and I believe that is the pastor, not the not the prophet, because the pastor is the one that's supposed to touch every 
every person, every every person, the sheep to care for. The shepherd cares for the sheep. The shepherd is the one that flocks the sheep. It means, it, it, you know, the shepherd, look at the natural shepherd and you can see the correlation to a, a shepherd spiritually. Uh, the shepherd of the sheep uh, even flags the sheep, you know, gets the sheep in line, you know, and, um, and but the shepherd also protects the sheep. And I don't see that in a prophet doing those things no. That, that, no, that, that the shepherd does for the for the for the for the body. So I because I, I know I know myself I've been around lots of prophets and prophets are, are going to do more of making sure that they say what God says and and uh, not that they don't have a care for the people but they will leave the people. You remember prophets are going to get in the cave. <laughs> And lead the people, but the pastor, the shepherd, a, a good shepherd, the true shepherd does not ever lead the sheep. Right. They're there, no matter what the sheep are going through. They're there. And then another thing, if you uh, look at the natural uh, shepherding, which is a pastor, that they will they will break the legs of a sheep and carry that sheep if the sheep keeps running off. So if they've got a sheep that continues to run off and doesn't stay in to get protected, they will break the legs of that sheep and carry them. And, and, and that sheep then is, is with that shepherd, lays with that shepherd. That shepherd picks him up, and, 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 and it's different than a prophet. A prophet ain't going to carry you. A prophet's like, get up, go get on your own two feet, do what God says. I mean, prophets are not – that's just not – kind of what they do. I'm not saying that they don't have compassion because, you know, they do, but it's not like that pastor. Mm -hmm. And that per that's why I know that that is the, the part that's more like the pastor is the heart. Right. And, and the other thing is, as it pertains to a pastor, and, and this, again, correlating to your body, if you were to get on an exercise bike or a treadmill or just, you know, take a, a nice brisk walk, um, as the more work the body does, the heart begins to pump more okay it, it, it pump and it, and it actually it actually gets stronger so I find that fascinating that as the body works and you have all the other systems you know if you're sweating here doing all this stuff's going on but the heart is pumping faster and it's actually good it's good that the heart is pumping because the heart is a what what is the heart the heart is a muscle right mm -hmm. the heart is a muscle so it becomes stronger this is telling us that the body is not to be, you know, is not to just be idle. If the body's idle, then what do pastors really do? See, we need, we, the, the point is that we need people activated. We need people moving. We need people doing things so that, and, and if there's something that when they're out there, something happens, maybe they twist an ankle. Um, you know, if using the body as an example, or there's some type of injury, the, the heart is going to pump blood, and it's going to uh, it has to do to to protect that area through uh, you know swelling it up and all that other stuff. So all this stuff works together. Um, I, I find it, it it fascinating, and um, as far as uh, you know, I, what I don't want people to think though is because the apostle is the brain and. You know, the brain sends signals all throughout the body that, that somehow uh, the apostle needs to be doing all the work. No, the apostle is more of the, the high-level type, uh, you know, showing, showing, showing others how things work, okay, kind of like the brain. The brain, is basically, the brain basically sends out signals, and as it fires these signals, then the, there's a response from other things. There's a response from the heart. There's a response from the lungs. Uh, there's a response from fingers and all this other stuff. So um, that's that's what I had, Tasha. What it would what, what what else you wanna go ahead and uh, Tasha? But I was gonna to kind of go along with what you were just sharing. As the apostles is mm -hmm. the brain or the the information center, so to speak. Um, if you are sending a signal to um, the heart or the lungs or the kidney and there is no response, then you don't, it's not going to function. So every right. central organ is dependent upon each other. So there really is no um, kind of a hierarchical system, but every essential organ is Good. dependent on each other. It, they have separate functions, 
but they're all dependent on each other. So if you send the heart a signal and the heart doesn't respond, there's going to be um, first, I mean, you're, you're smart, so you're going to try to go around the loop and, and use the other systems, but eventually those muscles will atrophy and there will be a shutdown and you can't function. That's the apostle can't function, That's the good. brain can't function without the heart, without the lungs, without the kidney, all doing their part, and that's, that was really good. Um, and it, it, you were about it um, the other day where you were saying an equipping center has to have all the components in order to, to function properly because it's all needed for the body. That's all. I just wanted to say that. Go ahead, Tasha. Okay, Tasha. Is there anything else? Um, Did you have something that you wanted to say while Precious was? No, I was, I was going to see if there was any comments. I, I can't see them right now. So. Okay. There's... Um, it looks like it's just me and Precious taking notes. <laughs> uh, Lewis, Apostle is the administrator, the prophet is the surgeon, the pastor is the paramedic. Or the evangelist is the paramedic, the pastor is the chaplain, the teacher is the physical therapist. I don't, I don't know. Maybe those are occup occupations um, that he was correlating those to. <coughs> Old terms, he said. Okay, I see it there. Um, one of the things um, that, as you guys were talking, that I wanted to bring up is that the organs never move from their spot. So the brain isn't going to leave the head and because the heart is in distress, go down and try and be the heart. <laughs> like it's not even, it's not physically made to even fit in that cavity in your body. Now it will try and help from where it is. But again, it's that, okay, I can do this for a little while, but after a while we're all gonna shut down because this is too much. So I just I wanted to to um, point that out is that your your um, organs never move and sometimes with um, those five gifts apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers you expect certain things like um, I know apostle says all the time people expected him to be a pastor and he's not a pastor so the brain he's like I am not the heart. It's kind of, it, you know, it would be like your brain talking, like, I'm not the heart. I can't, I can't do that. I can help. I can reroute you somewhere, but I can't be the heart. And then, um, but isn't it funny how we don't demand of our bodies um, to do things that are unnatural? Like, it just, it just happens. We don't even think about it. It's all, we take a breath, and you'd be, and Precious can confirm the amount of action that goes on in your body, just to breathe in and breathe out, to move your hand, um, the signals that are sent for me to right now move my hand like this seems like nothing. But there's so many things happening simultaneously that we don't even we don't even give thought to. It just happens because everything is in its place. So I wanted to I wanted to point that out. Um, the other thing is that. Inside the body, around we're talking about these five um, essential organs in our bodies, but there are hundreds of hundred trillion cells in your body. So all of those cells, however microscopic they are, they're needed. Some of them die off, you regenerate some, you know, but all of them in their space and in their place, they're needed. So nothing is too small, nothing's too big, nothing is, you know, overvalued uh, your set your brain or your organs are made up of a bunch of cells so you need down to the smallest particle you need it to function can i say something mm -hmm. um, with lung so what you see is um i'm taking a breath i'm inhaling and i'm exhaling and that's oxygen oxygenating my body from just like a very high level but the oxygen that I'm taking in is going down through my bronchial, to my, to my um, esophagus, and it is making a, an exchange down in, at the capillary level where it's exchanging carbon dioxide for oxygen, and it's exchanging with the heart and the blood vessels, and it's going through this whole system, through your kidneys, through your liver, all the way down to your toes, all the way back up, through your heart, and back out your lungs, 
and just this breath that you see. So just to further support what Tasha said, every little intricate detail, the way God created our body and the body, it's, it's, they're all essential. The five major organs kind of route um, things and they give a supporting structure, but every part is essential. You can't function without it. Yes. Okay, um, Apostle, if you could, um, we're talking about the organs. Um, they're not seen, um, but they're essential for life. I know um, you talk about um, the celebrityism that has infiltrated the church. Can you talk about yeah. those five and parallel them as not being seen? Yeah. Uh, I was just going to share something, Tasha. Uh, it was, it was kind of, yeah. can you hear me? Okay. Um, and it was about that it, with the natural body, that if there, if, if a part has to be replaced, let's just say there's a defective part, then they don't go and put another part in that place because it's, because it's one of the parts of five major parts. So if something's wrong with your lungs, they don't go and take your liver and put it where your lung goes. And I think that's what we've been doing in the body of Christ. We've been trying to take an, uh, one of these equipping gifts mm -hmm. and like say if there, there's no apostle there, we put a pastor there mm -hmm. and expected the pastor to, to be, in, yeah. well, which is the heart, to now become the brain. And, you, and just as you don't do that in a natural body, you cannot do that in the spiritual right. body. And that in itself causes, you know, problems because that part cannot function in that in that place yeah. even though you might say well it can fit up in the the kidney can fit up where the brain is or or you know <laughs> but it, but fitting there and it doing the function is two different things yeah. so i think we'll try to fit things spiritually fit people spiritually in places that they are not they cannot function in well it just and just like not, in right and just like in the body i mean there's no connective tissue so you could put it there but, it can't but there's no connective tissue, yeah. so it's it's just not. Even though it might fit in the spot, right? Because it's like it's not. And I think we do that, like we put on a warm body, like okay, um, and and we don't we think that that person can function there. And I think that's what's happened to pastors. They put pastors in the function of the of the apostle and pastor. And what it did is it's just burnt yeah. the pastor out, or you saw the person leave ministry, or you saw the person become ill, or all these things because we're trying to put them in a place that they're not meant to be in. So it's or important it's also, you, you just can't take a warm body because you get, because you need a space, somebody to fill in and then just put them there. Right. These these gifts that, that are to the body uh, of Christ as the, the functioning organs to the physical body are very important that they are in place yeah. to do what they are supposed to do. So I just wanted to share that before you went into um, those, right. Those, that well, and, and the and the thing, the funny thing is, Tasha, I, I actually didn't know you were going to ask me that question. But while you were talking, the Holy Spirit was downloading some stuff as it pertains to it. So, um, here's what I want to I want to say. Okay, so right now, those of you that are are viewing this, um, you see me. Uh, you see my body, flesh and blood. Right? Um, who is this? This is Robert. You see Robert, correct? Okay, so you don't see my brain, you don't see my heart, you don't see my liver, kidney, or uh, lungs. or lungs, <laughs> but you obviously know I have them because I'm alive. If I didn't have one of them, I wouldn't be alive. You would not see Robert's body, and. Here's the thing, and this is this is where it becomes very challenging. So we're paralleling five uh, critical uh, natural organs with the fivefold uh, gifts of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Yet you don't see them in the natural, but yet in the spiritual, as it were, the church. That's all we see. Wow. What we're not seeing is. We're we're not seeing the body of Christ. I mean, whose body is it? This is Robert's body. 
and we, the, the spiritual makeup of the body, the believers, we make up the body of Christ. Yes, so yes. what people should be seeing is Christ. Is Christ. Jesus. People, wow. people don't need to see apostles. They don't need to see prophets. They don't need to see pastors, teachers, and that doesn't diminish their their critical importance. We've yes. already established they're highly critical and highly important. But we're focusing on this, putting them out on display. Can you imagine if I took, if I cut my head and just pulled my brain out and put it out here and said, "Here, look, look at my brain and put it before my body." Well, first off, I would die knew that, but it would be like something out of some type of, you know, monster movie or whatever, some demonic movie or something like that. The other thing is, Tasha, I want to say, and, and again, I want to thank you and Mama Dixie and Precious for doing this. Um, because I think it's really challenging all of us, and I really believe we can, if we can capsule it, that we can maybe help others, and that's this. So here's the real question. Now, in equipping centers, or our time of equipping, clearly you're going to see apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, because there's a purpose there. That's the time of equipping the saints. But here's the real challenge now, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. When Paul talks about when you gather to worship, now the question is, why do we need to see apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers? I mean, why? When what we see Paul talking about is he's saying when you, and we have to now be, be correct in Scripture and say when he's saying you, who is he talking to in his letter? Is he talking to a group of apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers? No. He is talking to, that letter is written, uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 1, it's to the church at Corinth, meaning it's to the body of believers at Corinth. And he's saying, when you gather, you prophesy, you all. So, so again, I think that, now that doesn't mean that we can't have an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher in a gathering. I'm an apostle. I can be in a gathering. What I'm saying is, is when I go into a gathering to worship, the apostle hat comes off. I'm not, I, I don't need to be there to, unless, unless they're calling upon that gift to equip people, I do not need to flex my apostle muscle, as it were, and let it, and, as somehow I can get her done. No, the body needs to get it done because the body should have been equipped from those five gifts or the body should be, you know, operating with those five essentials that you're talking about now. So I think this really challenges again. I think it, it, it should, if anything, it should really, uh, people that hear this, that are uh, an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher should be humbled. They should understand that these are serving. I mean, I think that the the heart serves the body very well. What do you think, Precious? I think the the lungs, I mean, I thank God that I can breathe. I've seen people not being able to breathe. So can you imagine if my lungs or your lungs did not serve you? Or your kidneys were not serving? I mean, people that are not, their kidneys are not serving them, and they have to go through dialysis. And they have to every day. I think they. I think it's like I don't know what really dialysis is. I'm assuming it's some type of blood transfusion or something. Well, pressures. You're the expert. You, what is it? I don't even know what it is. So there are a couple of different types of dialysis, but basically, what what it does is this machine that basically is acting as your kidneys. All of your blood and all of your lymph is filtered out of your body through a machine. It takes it through a process that it cleanses it. And then it filters it back into your body. It acts just like a kidney, um, depending on the severity of your kidney damage. You can get it once a week, up to three times a week. Some people have to get it done daily. Wow. So, th so again, thank God that it functions. So now, now the real qu I think the real question is, and the onus is now, if you're fivefold, you need to function. You need to be doing what you do if you're the uh, do your apostle. If you're a prophet, do your prophet. If you're an evangelist, do it. Because if you're intoxicated or you're septic, I mean, if the liver's septic, what happens, Precious? If the liver can rejuvenate, it's one of the body that can actually heal if it's not too damaged. But oh. cannot. Uh, so, 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 
Oh my God. That's good. So, so a teacher, so a teacher wow. can humble themselves and learn something different. Jeez. That's it. Wow. Wow. That is really good. Wow. Wow. Mm. I'm liking this stuff. It's good. It's just, it's just talking. I think you said something Look, earlier. It really hit me. Um, that you don't see these five organs, but you know you see Robert, and but you know that I have them because I'm alive. That that's like a drop the mic. That's a post right there. You just go ahead and post that. But <laughs> but that is. I mean, it's like a you know that I'm alive, or you know that I have these because I'm alive. So you don't even have to ask me if I have a brain because I'm standing here. So as it relates to the spiritual side, you go into, you know, a gathering or a body of believers and it's some dead settings, some dead gatherings. And you can, you know, it doesn't take a scientist to know that these five essential major gifts are not present here. So just like it would be with the body because it would be dead. So yeah, that was, that was good. That was really good to me. It's like yeah. a check. So, so. I was just saying, it's just like a check balance system. Um, it, you just all need each other, and without it, you just not. You're not going to be in that homeostatic state. You're not going to function properly. You're going to put more work on somebody else. Um, if we're going to take this into to people or into the body parts, you're going to put more work on somebody else, and eventually. They're going to tire out, and you're not doing your function. And the only thing that takes you away from doing your function is a distraction. It's the enemy. It's flesh. So take your minute, take your breath, take your sabbatical, get back to work. Get focused on the kingdom of God. Good. Wow. This is like making me want to go old school and get up and shout. I'm telling you, this is a <laughs> good. But it, it's like it's hidden in plain sight we we um we you know search and study the scripture but it's like he's given us a real live god has given us a real live here in your face example this is how it works if you have not i don't know biology anatomy physiology I, I, i mean if you can take a class just just on gp do it it is our bodies are amazing they're amazing they, it's, it's indescribable. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you have anything else, MD? Well, just real quick, and, and then she's going to chime in here. Um, I mean, I, it's not, I mean, he calls it the body of Christ for a reason. I mean, he could have said anything of Christ. He calls it the body of Christ. So to deny the parallels, uh, just wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be wise. Um, just like he calls, you know, his his he calls the church the bride. There's a certain reason why he uses, you know, terminology in scripture is is very important. We have to understand that things aren't just, you know, God is so awesome that he just doesn't arbitrarily just say, I think we'll call it a body. No, I mean it's it's very he's very purposeful. Is what I want to say. Go, go ahead, Ben. No, see, that's really good. I, w- I was going to say that, um, and then correlating this with the other, um, other gifts, because of course we've got the, the ministry gifts, which um, or um, um, most people call them ministry gifts. They're the ones, you know, the, the server, the gift of serving, the gift of health, the gift of uh, government, prop- prophecy, which is um, also the gift of uh, mercy. And those gifts, okay, which is the, the, what, the, what the five equipping gifts are ministering to but the fact that the Holy Spirit is the gifts that manifest in the ministry gifts yet you don't see him either you don't see the spirit and and even what it says in um in John 16 13 about him it says how be he the spirit of truth will come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So in that, when you were saying about the celebrity uh, part of the, um, of the person, even the Holy Spirit doesn't 
celebrate himself. Even he isn't trying to be seen. And he has, you know, uh, manifestations of himself, you know, which is, uh, the, you know, the uh, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, uh, healing, faith, you know, and, you know, the, those gifts. But he doesn't come out and say, well, look at me. I'm getting ready to give you the healing. And I'm getting ready to give you, and, and guess what? I'm going to give you right here the gift of, uh, of, of faith. And I'm going to give you, you know, he doesn't. He's, he's unseen. He just he, he just allows the manifestations to be yeah. used for the ministry for, for the ministry of the body of Christ. So even he doesn't have a celebrity status. Well, he doesn't. God doesn't himself. have a celebrity status. God, so you don't see God. We, yeah, so how but you we, see. But all you have to do is open your eyes and say, "I know He exists." God. And so yeah. we got to get out of this. Uh, celebrity and you know I'm, I'm this and and titles because what's important is that the father is there you know and this is what I was going to share because as you are were talking I thought about you know if you have a brain and the brain is not functioning it doesn't matter you can say all day and night call it the brain it could be seen you know but it is, if it's seen it's probably not functioning. Because if you can see somebody's brain, that's got to be a problem. <laughs> you see somebody's Same brain, it's in a jar from outside. <laughs> that's right. Same with the lungs. If you see somebody's okay. lungs, then something, something's Thank wrong. You. That person is either not alive or they got some serious issues. The same with the, with the heart and every function. So we, we want to be sure that in the equipping gifts, just as in the organs, the five major organs mm -hmm. of the body, that we are not trying to be seen. Right. We want the function. There you go. That's what it's because all about. Because that's what's important to the body. Yeah. That function. Because you could be, you know, if you're being seen, like I said, then that person, that that person's dead. <laughs> you know, you taking out that person, uh, uh, they're, in a, uh, they're in an operating room, there's something really serious going on. And it's not just out there to, in front of everybody. Like Apostle said, even at a time where we worship, we gather to worship. You know, if you if you're seeing these these other you know gifts, then you're not seeing Christ. Well, yeah. The question becomes: Are you are you equipping? If so, then yeah, okay. You're gonna have these five in operations to the body. I mean, that's but your. They're still not even seen. Right, but it's you a know, time. But I'm. That, but it's a time of them releasing the function. Right, the function. The function. Amen. Not right. the not the person, but the function. Right. Not which, the gift. Which, which which now. But the function. Well, then now you're talking about titles. Do we even need those? I mean, so. You know, I mean, seriously, I mean, you know, you, you go to a doctor, you, you don't you don't really need to know that, you know, that uh, he has the word doctor before his name. You don't have to go in there and say doctor. I mean, typically we always do and stuff like that. All you want to know is, did this guy go to school? Does he know what he's talking about? That's it. You don't you don't really care about the MD behind him and all this other stuff. You really don't. We're caught up in that. That's religious. So all this stuff about, you know. Calling some be apostle, like I said, I've been trying. Me personally, I have been trying to uh, what's the, di digress from that or whatever word you know, just kind of push away from it. Not acknowledging that I'm not an apostle, uh, but I, I'm not going to put. You're never going to see another book written by Apostle Robert Summers. Um, you're not going to see another manual written by Apostle Robert Summers. You're not going to see another YouTube video where Apostle Robert Summers did it, because I was not born Apostle Robert Summers. I was born Robert Summers. That's what's on my birth certificate. You, you don't know I'm an apostle, but I have to give you a business card to tell you that I am. That's weak. That's weak. Can you imagine a doctor? Yeah, can you imagine a doctor saying, here, I'm giving you my, I'm giving you my business card, and you, you kind of get nervous, like, is he a doctor, or is he in the back room Googling what your problem is, you know? So, uh, yeah. Well, I, I wanna, this is good. I want to say uh, thank you, Tasha, for organizing this. And, uh, of course, I was saying, here, Tasha, her gift of organization, her gift of, of um, governing, and, and uh, is really ruling the gift of ruling, as uh, you can see that she is operating in it and getting these different uh, p parts of the body. To Wait a minute. Together. I thought apostles rule. <laughs> no, not no. That's not the ruling. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the government, Pernice. Oh, I thought apostles did everything. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry, apostles. <laughs> gosh. 
<laughs> so this is really going to help help us um, just seeing these parts of the body functioning and then helping. That's that's going to help others see how the body should function. So yeah, this is good. This is so good. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Precious, for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys you did for a great job. Medical knowledge. Thank you, Apostle, for joining us for uh, tonight, Wednesday night. And we're going to continue to to uh, explore this further. Uh, I don't know if um, you have not, I guess, go back and look at the YouTubes of the other Wednesday nights so you can kind of um, be brought up to date if, you, if this is your first time joining us so that you can find out why we are going through and showing you the body, the functions of the natural body and comparing them to the spiritual body. Yeah, so, and a lot more to come. Yes, That's for sure. Yes. We've got a lot more to come. Absolutely. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Um, if, uh, Tasha, did you want to um, go marks. ahead and clo uh, close us out and and um, and also um, give the information for giving too? Thanks. Yes, you can go to summersministries.com or aocdm.org um, and click on the giving link to give. Of course, these broadcasts are brought to you by your free will gifts and offerings. So we appreciate them. We need them. And uh, I think, Precious, did you put the link in there? I did. Yeah. So if you want, you can go just click on that now. And if not, you can always go to the website later. Um, four at one, for those of you who join us, that will be Monday at 8 o'clock. If you do not join us, you can do that on summersministries.com as well. Uh, Tuesday nights, for those of you who are not on that call, um, that is, we, we're talking about equipping. Equipping centers, people have questions concerning, you know, trying to come out of religion and what does it look like and all those good things. So that's a good forum to ask questions. And um, it's, it's a little bit more relaxed um, and, and you can ask questions, give your input, that kind of thing. So um, does anyone else have anything else to add? Apostle Brian, I know um, he wasn't able to get on until a little later, but I haven't forgotten those 12 systems. So he did, he did send some information, and so maybe next week he can elaborate on what God gave him concerning all the systems of the body. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, need to, we need to do that next week. That would be great. Good. Anything else? Anyone else? All right. Well, we think... Huh? What would you say? I just want to say good job. Uh, just thank you. Great job. Thank you, Precious. Thank you. MD. Thank you. Good job. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Does this mean I don't have to show my webcam anymore? You still have to show it. Because I don't need to see. Yeah. <laughs>